sorry. Okay, uh, and could you, uh, so the reason why we'll do it is um, meditation. It's a really short one, about like three minutes, uh, is because to clear up your mind with, um, and then try to concentrate on this workshop and then relax a little bit because it's the title of our workshop. So um, calm yourself down and then, you know, so yeah, you can just close your eyes or you feel free to close your camera as well. Um, if you don't want to uh, be seen in the camera while you're doing meditation and you can just follow the instruction in the video. Mindful breathing. Close your eyes and rest your hands on your knees. Bring your attention to the touch of your body on your seat. Feel the weight of your body on your chair or cushion. Make sure that your back is straight and that you're comfortable. Take a few deep breaths. While you're breathing deeply, relax your shoulders, your stomach muscles, the muscles in your face, your hands, and your legs. Let go of all the tightness in your body. Now bring your attention back to your breath. Notice what it feels like as it enters through your nose, goes down through your throat, filling your lungs, and back out through your nose. Notice your stomach and chest rise and fall each time you breathe in and each time you breathe out. And just allow your breathing to be natural and relaxed. Now bring your attention to the feeling of your breath in your nose. Feel your breath as it comes in and goes out. Just focus on this sensation, paying attention to each time you breathe in and each time you breathe out. As you inhale, maybe your breath feels cool and as you exhale, maybe it feels a little warmer. When your mind wanders, or if you become distracted, just notice what's going on in your head, and then gently bring your attention back to your breath, going in and out. Focus on the feeling of your breath and allow thoughts and feelings to come and go in the background. Now gently bring your attention back to the touch of your body on your seat and open your eyes. All right, I hope you had a nice time. Um, Actually, it is known that um, mindfulness meditation is important for your mind well-being. Um, so uh, feel free to do it um, regularly in your daily life as well. So now we are going to move on to the Mindful next slide. Breathing. Oh no, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we'll watch another video actually. Um, so in this video, we, we made a short video of ourselves um, being in certain situations. And each of us will um, demonstrate uh, three main signs of burnout. So I want you to uh, take a close look at this video and think about what, what would be the sign, main sign of burnout. We'll have a little uh, chat, chat box discussion time after that. However, uh, this video is made um, for, made to um, keep this, uh, atmosphere a bit light so that um, it won't be all dark and pressuring all the time. So I want you to take a 
good look at it, but also I want you to enjoy it. So let's take a look. everyone, this is Professor Kat and I wanted to discuss the reading that was assigned over the weekend. Did anyone have any thoughts on the reading? Q, did you, what did you think about the reading? That was it. So now let's talk about what is burnout for a little while. Um, so write down any idea that comes to your mind about what is burnout into the chat box, please. Meanwhile, I'll talk a little bit. Um, burnout syndrome is a term first used by one American psychologist, Herbert Friedrich Freudenberger, and it is also called exhaustion syndrome. Okay, I see a lot of comments going on. Um, zero progress, way too tired, seeing no point of doing things, disengaged. Thanks for sharing everyone. Yeah, I see a lot of relatable comments and yeah. Avoidance of tasks, disconnected, blaming oneself, being cynical, I see. sleep deprivation. Yeah, a lot of great comments. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing everyone. Yes, um, it is actually true that um, Bumika will continue with more elaboration, but the main uh, burnout is a combination of different symptoms, more than one symptoms. However, uh, this, um, this expert called Maslach, um, Define that there are three main dimensions of burnout, which is exhaustion, inefficacy, and cynicism. It is true that other symptoms exist. Anxiety, anger, those are all um, burnout signs as well. However, these main, um, main three symptoms are the ones that were shown in the video as well. So Kat, for example, uh, was very cynical about her thesis. She didn't see any point of doing this and she was um, reluctant to meet her friend. And the next person, Bumika, was very inefficient in writing her essay. Uh, after hours and hours, she was still on the same page. Um, 
finally, I was so exhausted that I spent the whole day just lying on the bed because I was too exhausted. So that was a short description about burnout. So next, Bumika will elaborate on that. Yes, thank you, Q, for that uh, brief explanation on burnout. All right, can you guys hear me? Okay, yes, great. Um, so I feel like everyone from the, what I'm reading from the chat has some idea about what burnout is or might have heard it as a catch word because it's thrown up, thrown around a lot nowadays. Um, what we're going to do before we go ahead with this activity is let's take like a small informal poll. And uh, I wanted Q to stop sharing the screen so that we can all see each other while doing this. Yes, great. Um, okay. So if you agree with this statement, what I want you to do is like give me a thumbs up. All right, we're going to do thumbs up. If you agree with the statement that I'm saying uh, that I'm talking about. Okay, the first question is, if you have felt any of the symptoms of burnout that Q spoke about earlier, which is exhaustion, cynicism, and inefficacy, any time at any point in your life, can you give me a thumbs up? Okay, and the second question is, if you have felt any of these symptoms, especially during the pandemic or during quarantine, can you raise a heart, like a heart smiley, which is there in the reactions? All right. So that was quite an overwhelming response. And the heart is meant for sort of all of us to take it in. Um, I'm not going to talk much about um, the number that we witnessed here. We'll get to talk about it during this activity. So Q, maybe if you can present the screen again. OK, so we are going to be doing a small uh, drawing activity. Um, it would be great if you can get like a paper pen and some stationery, and if you have it with you, just give me a thumbs up so I can explain what we're doing. Thank you, Alina. Thank you, Meg. Thank you, Ross. All right, let's go ahead. So we are gonna be doing doodling, and the three rules to doodling are that it's a very simple drawing. You don't have to erase anything that you draw, and don't think too much about it. So what do we want you to doodle about? So think about that time that you felt one of the symptoms of burnout and uh, express it through the doodle. Um, once you're done doodling, you can uh, spend around five minutes doing it. Then you can discuss, show your drawing to your friends and discuss a bit about that experience. And we're gonna be doing this in the breakout room, room for 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna put you in breakout rooms. Hopefully you guys have like really good discussions there. Yeah. Okay, I think all of us are back now. We can hear you. Yes. Um, okay, let's go ahead. Uh, before we go ahead, I just wanted to find out from a few past participants. Um, how was your discussion in the breakout room? Anything like anything surprising that something that stood out to you? Probably you found something that was very much in common with something someone else was talking about. Let's take some responses from a few people before we go ahead. All of us have insomnia, which is crazy because if you're tired, we're supposed to be able to sleep, but then you can't. Interesting, Natalia, did you say insomnia and someone else had, had it in common with you? All of us had it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's terrible. 
Thank you for sharing. I can see some responses in the chat as well. Oh my gosh, yes. Ah. Everything was relatable. And people generally feeling like they had a lot in common when it came to uh, burnout. All right, let's go ahead. Can we go to the new uh, next slide? Okay, some more. All right, another response. It is a very international problem. Yes. Okay, so um, before we go ahead, I wanted to address something um, about this relationship between burnout and stress. And uh, since we are talking about burnout uh, and our experiences, we all must be wondering that uh, that time that we were exhausted or really stressed out or cynical, were we actually burnt out? Because we must have been feeling really stressful. And maybe you were burnt out, maybe you weren't. Uh, and it's important here to understand what stress is and what it does to you. And uh, as you can see over here, there is a small curve explaining the relationship between um, stress and human performance. And what it tells you basically is that not all stress is bad for you. So if you can see in the yellow zone here, at some levels of stress, humans do perform optimally. Uh, as opposed to if you have very little stress or like very little motivation, then you're kind of inactive. But if you see in the red, if, if you look at the red zone over here, extreme levels of stress can lead to burnout. So extreme stress can be one of the causes of burnout. Another way to identify burnout, maybe in yourself or in, uh, in your friends or your colleagues is uh, to understand that it is not uh, monolithic. As you had explained earlier, it shows up as a combination of uh, many of the three symptoms or many other symptoms, um, which are exhaust, exhaustion, cynicism, and inefficacy. And uh, there are multiple ways now that uh, now to diagnose burnout. One of them is the Meslek burnout inventory. It's basically this questionnaire that scales you on uh, how far burnt out you are on different levels of of these symptoms of exhaustion or cynicism or inefficacy. And lastly, something I wanted to mention is uh, uh, in 2019, actually, WHO recognized burnout as, uh, as a medical condition, as a medical syndrome, and it is defined by WHO as a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic, chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed. So, now people can get uh, get diagnosed with burnout syndrome if you go to a medical professional. Yes. Okay, so the next few slides are going to be a bit information heavy. And since this is a workshop, it's, it's meant for us to interact. So please feel free to um, put any of your thoughts in the chat box. I'll be checking the chat box uh, constantly. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. Um, it's important to address, we've all come here to address actually burnout in educators. And something I found from my research is that people who are working in human services and caregiving occupations are actually at higher risk of burning out. Uh, some of the reasons I can think about this is because uh, jobs like teaching and uh, education, they require so much of your uh, emotional investment that the line between your personal life and your work life is slightly blurred. Uh, secondly, when there is a, yeah. Secondly, in educators, if you see if there's a lack of teacher autonomy, if a teacher cannot take her own decisions in the classroom and there are a lot of reforms or rules that she's subjugated to and she's constantly he or she is constantly overworked, that can also lead to burnout in educators. Something else I wanted to address is like in many societies and in many uh, communities, there is now this culture of uh, overwork or this hustle culture that we call it, where we prioritize uh, working a lot or we prioritize sort of being um, not prioritized or we look up on uh, people who are workaholics. 
um and uh, this is wrong and uh, it sort of leads us to think that uh, uh, it sort of leads us to putting our personal life on the back seat and this can also lead to burnout in educators and lastly we have to address and talk about covid-19 and the pandemic mm. and uh, what the pandemic did is it put us at a higher risk of uh, being burnt out and that is because uh when the pandemic hit we moved to virtual classes and we were constantly overworked and educators were trying to create these large online hybrid classes and they were getting to know all this technology all at once and that can lead to exhaustion similarly there were increased barriers between the teacher and the student now and this can lead to a sense of uh, detachment or cynicism between the teacher and the student and lastly not being able to achieve the same results that the teacher did before not being able to achieve the same results that uh, came out of being in um, an in person class that can lead to a feeling of inadequacy among, among educators okay let's look at the chat box for some thoughts all right okay also it's important to address um burnout in students okay research has found that burnout in university students and high school students as well and students students can experience like similar symptoms of burnout although like the underlying reasons can may differ and you may have noticed when i was giving you like the who um definition that it does not account for uh, uh burnout in uh, any place other than like a workplace um so very much the research is still going on about burnout in student and uh, in the university and how it takes place among students although it is not uh, right now recognized yes so the research also defines something called school related burnout and it's defined as a consequence of excessive school demands lack of uh, control lack of validation of high achievement lack of interpersonal relationships and high expectations from significant others like teachers and family members and i don't think i have to talk a lot about burnout in students uh, i'm sure like most of us are students here and i know how we experience um sort of our deadlines and how we experience exhaustion together we know what are the causes of the burnout that we feel also research has shown that burnout is linked to many of uh, uh, mental health conditions like depression and it also affects the academic performance of students and lastly again uh, let's talk about covid-19 and um, for students especially um, they felt uh, the similar disconnect that the teachers felt and these can lead to symptoms of burnout uh additionally some students might have experienced personal losses in their family and if it's not dealt with that can also lead to burnout and also the general uncertainty of the situation right like you can't uh, you can't basically plan for uh, like a year a year ahead because your plans can fall through because you can't plan for what's going to happen with the pandemic and this un uncertainty can also lead to uh symptoms of burnout all right going to ch check the chat box again before i go ahead yes emotions are a large part of exhaustion okay and lastly burnout again during the pandemic and uh, I feel kind of this is kind of ironic talking about zoom fatigue being in a zoom session <laughs> with all of you guys but it's very important to address this and it's a very much a real condition or a phenomenon which happens uh, it's defined as tiredness worry or even burnout associated with overuse of virtual platforms of communication like particularly video conferencing and uh, there's actually the stanford study which uh, kind of helps you uh, kind of tells you uh, how zoom fatigued you are there are a bunch of questions you can answer and you get a score towards the end and i have linked uh, these resources 
in this slide, which you will get after the workshop. So please feel free to check it out. I unfortunately got a very high score when I did the test. So <laughs> maybe I need to take a break from all these Zoom sessions, but yeah. And lastly, I want to talk about the great te uh, teacher resignation. This is something similar to the great resignation that there was witnessed, a phenomenon that happened in America. And uh, this is a line I picked up from uh, a Forbes article, which says that one, one out of three students, uh, three teachers in the US are thinking of quitting the classroom with similar proportions in the UK. And uh, although this is talking about only uh, two regions globally, we must be aware of the situation that the teachers had to face during the pandemic and what might have occurred. Yes, I can see some responses in the chat box. It's very relatable to the Korean context as well. All right. So now that we ha have a lot of information um, coming into our brain, um, so let's take a five minutes, about five minutes break. Make sure you stretch, move your body, stretch, or just walk around a little bit, something like that. Uh, we'll tell you why it is important in the later phase, but make sure to do that and relax a little bit and see you guys in five minutes. Yes, and we will come back and continue the discussions we are having. There are, there'll be a lot more opportunities for us to do that. But for right now, let's take a break.
All right, everyone. I hope you had a nice little break. All right, so with our refreshed uh, brains, we'll now go on, continue on the conversation. But this time, we'll have a little um, program called Jamboard. We'll again go back to the breakout rooms. It's going to be the same breakout room because we thought it'll be more comfortable to talk to the people that you've already discussed about like symptoms um, and so on. So this activity is going to um, be about exploring the causes of burnout. So we've so far talked about symptoms and then uh, the causes of burnout a little bit. So we'll further discuss about it. So on, if you go to the Jamboard, Bubika will later share the link to the chat so that you can get it from there. So on the branches, there are symptoms of burnout. I mean, there are, we just put the main three symptoms of burnout, but then you can just imagine that there are more anxiety, anger, insom insomnia, and so on. So the part that you will be working on will be the trunk part and then the root part. So in the trunk part, you will be writing immediate causes on the stems uh, here. So for example, if you think about, hmm, why am I so tired? Then the reason could be, oh, I have too many assignments or distance learning, or I'm pressured to graduate on time. Those kind of things could be the immediate causes of burnout. So you can write that in the uh, trunk parts. Again, then um, move on to the root part. We'll be discussing about it in an even more deeper level of the causes. So if you think about it, uh, there could be deeper reasons like university grants is expiring and all the things that you can come up with. And there is one tip if you are struggling with coming up with the deeper level, you can always uh, ask why. For example, uh, why are we always cynical? Then we ask why. Then hmm, we have too many assignments. Again, we ask why. Oh, we have, uh, yeah, we can think about why do we have so much assignments? So, uh, and the, so Burika, could you uh, share the link? Yes, thank you so much. And then also break our room, please. So we'll give you like 15 minutes to this, um, work on this um, together. And then we'll come back to this big room and then discuss a bit more about systemic or bigger reasons of burnout. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we've been looking at what you guys have been writing and it's been super interesting. And I guess with each group, we like, you know, as well as we kind of that kind of told you guys we were interested in the root cause, there's a lot about kind of like moving away from the individual, um, you know, responsibility towards larger societal issues. So for group one, they like, I really liked how they went into, you know, confusion about priorities because of the uncertainty for, of the future, which I think has a lot to do with, you know, the labor market and uh, also how making connections is hard, especially in the pandemic. And um, even how they mentioned, you know, FOMO and being a perfectionist kind of, which I, I feel like that's actually really a common issue, like perfectionism. So do you guys have anything to add? Like just unmute yourselves if you wanna add something or have any thoughts. Uh, we talked quite a bit about being a perfect perfectionist or wanting to do so many things, but knowing it's impossible. Um, yeah, and like, where does that come from? Yeah, thank you. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a good, these are good questions and good, really good points. These are, sorry, good questions and really good points. And um, yeah, for group two, yeah, we also, I saw a lot of things that I also related to, like the point about perfectionism in group one. So like the issue of guilt. And again, just like group one, precariousness and uncertainty. 
I think that this like idea of precariousness and uncertainty is really relevant, especially with COVID and the labor market and you know how jobs are increasingly more difficult to find and longer contracts are more difficult to find. But at the same time, there's like so much pressure like they put here to be successful. Um, do you have anything to add here? Or does anyone have any, like any thoughts? Did anything come up for anyone? Um, yeah, we definitely talked a lot about social pressure, like not only social pressure as educators or um, like as students in school, but also like the normal social pressure that I guess everyone feels of having a family, having an apartment or like whatever stage of life you're supposed to be at. And we kind of um, connected that to like the pressure we feel here as students sometimes of where am I supposed to be? And then that led to like a conversation also related to society and how society perceives and values education and how that can also affect us because we are specifically education students, but I know not everyone is, but in that sense too, if you work in education, like feeling how society perceives you, whether it's like they value you or you, or you don't think it's like funded enough or whatever, like how that can also affect us. Yeah, yeah, thanks for sharing. Like, yeah, that's a really good point. And like you said, it's not even just, you know, school or work or finding a job, it's all these other pressures as well. But like, you know, for me, you know, I really get that, like there's a pressure to look a certain way and maybe like, you know, like you said, there's pressures to have certain like life stages. I feel like at least where I'm from in the US in terms of when you buy a house and when you do all these other things too. So it's just a lot of pressure. And then, okay, the third group as well. So organized, <laughs> I like it. Um, so again, there's like this movement towards talking more about, less about the individual, more about things like capitalism, neoliberalism, power relations. I think this is really interesting. White supremacy. Um, and then like, yeah, humans focus on the self. I guess like maybe human, do you guys mean like human nature? And do you guys have anything to add to this? Or anyone have any thoughts? Well, for sure, like power relations, uh, that just really highlights to me how often we talk about burnout, um, as, at least with like fellow students, as, as a problem that like we share, um, but then we don't really, I feel like quite often we don't really go deeper to um, what kind of, like what does the world look like? For example, if you experience racism, if you uh, are like singled out because of your gender, things like that, um, and how it can like, play into burnout and play into these feelings of, not having a place or not belonging, not fitting in, like those are mentioned here, or how your feeling of lacking resources may be very, very real, like on a physical concrete level as well. And then it doesn't always help to have some meditation sessions and it may make you feel even more like tired and frustrated, like this is not doing anything for me. This is not getting to the root of the problem. Even though for another individual, uh, the daily meditation may be like a very good big step. I maybe like to say something about the uh, um, physical side um, as a root problem. I, I actually, in our group, I mentioned uh, about diet, that's important, but what I think what we did in the break was significant because I think one of the main problems in burnout is basically lack of physical movement and exercise. Uh, that's, you know, if you notice that kind of curve, so if you're on the lower end of the curve, you're not getting your exercise, you're burning out, even though you're, you're not stressing your body, but you're stressing your mind because you're not getting enough physical stimulation and I think stretching is a very important part of that. 
also. Uh, so it was really, I think, a good little learning example that that break. We need to move around. We need to exercise as much as possible. We can't sit in a chair all day. People were not meant to learn by sitting in a chair. They were meant to learn by, you know, going about and learning things actively, you know. So I think we've lost that. We have to get it back. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that because, yeah, that's something we also found interestingly in the research, you know, which we'll go a bit into um, later. We're like running a bit short on time, but yeah, these are all really good points. And yeah, the this group as well talks like goes into more the roots, which is, you know, capitalist ideology. Again, this talking less about the individual, more about these, you know, the systematic causes of burnout. So now, okay, so yes, as I was saying, we are going into burnout at the systemic level. That is what you, all of your jam boards really move towards as well. So we've also found in the research that, you know, there still is this pattern even though it's changing and we're trying to change it as well with this workshop, where when someone is struggling with burnout, the question is more about like this issue of self-care and what can we do to help the person. But as we can see in the chat and in our conversations, this is something that so many of us have experienced. And it, you know, it's caused, there's a lot of societal causes of this. Oh yes, we also want to say that to further discuss in the debrief session, the jam boards and this issue, please please join us 20 minutes after the workshop. But yeah, so basically we wanna to try to move away from the individual level to the systemic level with this question. And here we put a picture of the climate change movement, which like we thought was a really you know similar analogy. I remember, for example, growing up seeing all these posters about like, turn off the faucet while you brush your teeth. and you know, this, this push for change on the individual level. And as we've seen from COVID, you know, when the world basically shut down, there wasn't much change in carbon emissions or in climate change. So, you know, these aren't, it's, it's, we need to start questioning as the climate change movement has these corporations and these systemic issues. So we also want to move that conversation about burnout, um, in that direction. And we also wanted to give a shout out to Bruno, who's in this workshop right now, because he really, you know, brought up this to Q and I and sparked our interest in burnout at the systemic level. So as we have found, you, you are sort of set up to fail from the start. There's, you know, unsustainable expectations in, in terms of your, your schoolwork, like, uh, the labor market as well, and then all these other expectations that society puts on us that makes us burn out, basically. So, yeah, some really interesting things in the chat as well. Man, thank you so much, guys, for all of these comments. And um, so the burning question that we, this is the center of our workshop, is how can we address burnout in education at the systemic level? And this is a very complex question. We don't have, you know, there is no like same simple answer or one answer to this question, but this is where we're trying to steer the conversation. So we wanted to leave this with you guys. Um, so we wanted to talk, you know, ha have you guys help us um, talk about ways that you have managed burnout symptoms because it seems like many of you like us have also struggled with this issue. So please um, unmute yourself and share your ideas. I also want to quickly comment on some things in the chat because um, people have put so many interesting things. Um, so there's this issue of, you know, issues with food now due to the pandemic and um, yeah, these issues where, okay, huh. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that, Alex. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I should, <laughs> again, I'm not an expert on, you know, so that's a good point. Can I make a quick comment? Um, hasn't been t talked about, but I've been listening here and there to videos and people who've commented on this, the, uh, the effect of all these electronic devices 
and radio waves and electromagnetic fields that accompany them. Uh, it's been shown to increase stress in the human body. Um, radio waves are ionizing radiation, which can actually create stress chemicals in your body, um, breaking down your cells a little bit. Um, anyway, one solution that people have said is that, you know, you can't just be in the middle of all this electronics all the time in front of a computer all the time, but you need to get away from those machines, turn them off, go outside, take a walk in the sunshine, <laughs> ski, go out into nature. Finland has this great thing that there's such beautiful nature everywhere and we just need to take advantage of that. And that is one way to cool off from this electronic burnout, I would say. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, I think that's a really good point. And <laughs> yeah, good point that there isn't much sunshine in Finland, uh, <laughs> said, but yeah. And as I think Brian said before, or I think it was Brian that physical movement as well, we, we found in the research that, you know, sometimes when you're exhausted and burnt out, you just wanna vegetate and watch Netflix for six hours, but it actually can make you more tired. So like you guys have already said to, yeah, like you guys have already said to maybe knit while you watch TV or you have to keep moving, um, I guess like counterintuitively to, to keep your energy. So we're running a bit late on time. So we're gonna move, to, oh, sorry, we're running a bit late. So we're gonna move to the next slide. Um, yeah, so as I said, um, we found two main misconceptions on ways to manage burnout. The first is that, you know, like Bumika has mentioned, stress is not inherently a bad thing. But nowadays, especially with the pandemic, as humans, you know, we need to, we need to move physically in order to complete the stress cycle. The stress cycle starts with a stressor. So maybe back in the day, it was like being chased by a bear in the woods, that's a stressor. And then you feel the stress. And then, you know, back in the day, you would run away from the bear and you would get away and then you would see your friends and people, you would all be like, yeah, there was a bear, but I, you know, I managed to get away. And then you have then, you know, physically let go of that stress and let go of that energy. And you're able to complete the stress cycle. But nowadays, you know, we have different stressors and we have some chronic stressors and we never move physically to complete the stress cycle. So we, you know, we saw in the research that even, you know, when you overcome something stressful to do some jumping jacks or to take a walk, this is, instead of just lying in front of the TV, this actually helps you complete the stress cycle and become less burnt out. And then the other main misconception we found is that as burnout is not an individual problem, it's a societal problem, self-care is not the only solution. So we're going to show you guys a quick video that addresses this right now. How can people who feel truly stuck take a first step towards wellness and, and how do you define wellness too? We define wellness as the freedom to oscillate through all the cycles of being human, from effort to rest, from autonomy to connection. And we always say that the cure for burnout is not self-care, cannot be self-care. How can you be expected to self-care your way out of burnout? You can't. What you need is a bubble of love around you, people who care about your well-being as much as you care about theirs, who will turn toward you and say, you need a break. I'm gonna help you with this. I'm gonna step in in that way, or even just give you 15 minutes for you to yell about whatever the problems you feel at that moment and just be on your side and go, yeah, I can't believe that happened to you. I'm so on your side for 15 minutes. Just that can give you enough of a release to feel a little bit better to take one more step. The cure for burnout is not self-care. It is all of us caring for each other. We can't do it alone. We need each other. Making that happen in real life is, of course, easier said than done. Um, and one of the things that is my little reminder to myself is that when I feel like I need more grit, what I actually need is more help. And when I look at Amelia's life, and I think she needs more discipline, she needs more perseverance, she needs to work harder. What she actually needs is more kindness. That's the baseline yeah. culture change that's going to end burnout forever. And usually the next question people ask us is, I don't have anyone like that in my life. I am the leader. I am the one who's doing all of the things and 
the solution for that is probably closer than you think. I mean, I grew up in a household where feelings were like not allowed and we were not close our whole lives. And then we started reading the research that said that connection and sharing support was the way out of burnout. And we started trying and we like broke down this 30 year barrier of, you know, societal and family pressure not to like feel our feelings around each other. And it turns out that if you feel like you're isolated, there's probably someone on the other side of that wall, it turns out, who wants just as much as you to connect with someone else. And we've been isolated because we've been told that it's, it's stronger to be independent. That's not true. It's we're gonna be healthier and stronger when we work together there's probably someone already waiting who also wants the kind of relationship that you are desiring. I think that's... Yeah, I hope you... Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Actually, we were so glad to find this video because at first we were thinking, hmm, maybe now that we pointed out systemic causes of burnout, meanwhile, people are... Uh, the society is trying to solve them. Maybe we can change our little like individual routines or something. So we were thinking more like an individual level of like self-caring, but then we found this video and we were kind of mind blowing that, oh my gosh, that is so true. So I hope you um, uh, figured something out from this video as well. Um, we will now link the, later link the video to you so that you can keep watching this um, video. There is Emily Nagoski and Amelia Nagoski, uh, twin sisters. They actually wrote a book called Burnout. Um, it's a really nice source of information. So you can also um, take a look later. Okay, so we rushed a little bit, but I'm sorry about that. Uh, but before we close up, I wanted to uh, introduce you to this little nice method to calm yourself down a little bit. It's called Butterfly Hug, and it was created by um, Professor Harero and then Artigas. And then this was to kind of relax from flashback and rush of emotion, anxiety, especially for trauma patients. But um, it works in general for calming yourself. And then if you have rush of anxiety, things like that, then you can use this method. It's really easy. You just crush your arms around, uh, like in front of your chest, and then you just tap on each side. And then you just breathe in and out and just tell yourself that it's okay. It's okay. And you just meditate, but just with your arms crossed like this and tap yourself. It actually helps for me. So I personally really like this method and I wanted to share this with you guys. If you're maybe um, there, there, need, there is need for like more um, cure or a solution for um, burnout, but then in that right moment, this kind of thing can help you get out of that situation. And we put some sources, links about um, burnout and then where you can get help also from University of Oulu or just anywhere. And feel free to add more if you if you know any good sources where we can get help. You can put in the chat, but also in the, in the later slide, we'll give you a link to a Google form about this workshop feedback. There is a place where you can add link yourself as well. So please do that if you have any. And these are the references that we referred to. And here's the link and Pumika will share the link on the chat. Um, you can do it now or anytime. We'll take a look, good care, uh, like the good luck, and then we will reflect. It'll be really nice. And also, we rushed a little bit, so we couldn't go through every part so thoroughly. However, luckily, we have a debrief session after about 20 minutes after this workshop. So you can come back to this same link after 20 minutes, and we can discuss more about anything that you want to discuss. Yes, we will keep the chat box and Jamboard so that we can continue discussing in debrief room. But for now, uh, thank you so much for joining our workshop. It was wonderful. We learned so much ourselves from you guys as well. And we were so impressed, especially because our first workshop unfortunately got canceled. It was so nice that we finally had to have this. And it was really nice 
that everyone actively participated so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, you guys, for coming. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. I really liked all of your points, and yeah, it's really good. I wish we had more time, though, really. <laughs> but we'll see you for the deep brief session after 20 minutes. All right, thank you. Thank you. It's a debrief at 12. Bye bye. Okay, I'll try. And yes. Do that. Thanks a lot. How long are you planning to have the debrief for? We have the coffee chat starting at 12.30. Uh, yeah, I think um, about like 30 minutes. Yeah, not more than that, I think. Okay. So yeah, I can. we can guide them to the coffee chat. Yep. Yes. So are you kicking us out now from here? <laughs> you can stay if you want. We'll be using the same link, so. <laughs> OK. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thanks a whole bunch. Mercy buckets, as we used to say. Bye bye. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.